Ten years ago, my great aunt, or in Polish, Chachi Billy, was diagnosed with terminal lung cancer. Now, Chachi Billy was an independent spirit. You might say she was a bit of a hellraiser. She wouldn't let anything keep her from bustling about her business, so much so that falls and hip injuries became a routine for our family. She drove my mother, my mother nuts sometimes, but she also beat back cancer three times and lived years longer than her prognosis. Too often overlooked in the treatment of physical illness is its relationship with attitudes and behaviors. Anecdotally, we know of fighters like my Chuchi Billy, and studies have begun to prove the positive health impacts of a positive attitude, not to mention its clear impact on personal well-being. But doctors are already strapped for time. Amid so many other tough clinical decisions, patient happiness risks taking the back burner sometimes. That's why we built HAP. HAP is a mood and behavior tracker for life-changing illnesses. Prescribed and provided by the patient's doctor or health plan, HAP improves clinical outcomes by targeting events which indicate a mental turn for the worse. Let's take a fictional Charlene Mulligan, who's recently diagnosed with lymph node cancer. If Charlene continues to exhibit healthy habits, HAP doesn't interfere. But HAP can also identify when Charlene isn't exhibiting healthy habits, isn't staying mobile, isn't sleeping enough, or isn't engaging with her social connections and social network. HAP's decision engine does this by watching for data changes on Facebook, Twitter, and the Philips Health Suite platform. When these negative trends are identified, HAP checks in with Charlene, prompting her for more information about her mental and physical state, then connecting the doctor to this data or alerting them and her family if it is a crisis situation. We're now going to demo for you how this works. Charlene is an active social media user and often shares how she's feeling on Twitter. She's uh, feeling particularly bad today and posts a tweet to that effect. Hap sees Charlene's tweet, uses sentiment analysis to identify that it is negative, and pushes a notification to an app on her phone to check in with her. The questions in the app are designed to help Charlene improve her mood or her physical situation while also giving the doctor information they need to make better care decisions. At the end of this, we provide the doctor with this information that Charlene fills out as part of her survey and compile this information into a visual dashboard, which allows the doctor to compare this mood data that we've gathered against data that's stored on the uh, uh, Philips Health Suite digital platform, such as sleep data, movement data, uh, and other metrics along the lines of their medications and so on, which we currently don't have in the platform, uh, but would be integrated with it. As uh, uh, as that, oh, sorry. Uh, as you can see from our demo here, our app, our database, decision engine, push service, and doctor dashboard are all fully functional and were built within this past 36 hours. Now, so I was going to address the technical aspects. So, um, HAP's technical architecture consists of four node agents that we built uh, from scratch in the last 24 hours. Uh, we plan to open source the majority of this code that will help other developers trying to solve a similar problem. Uh, the first agent actually pulls uh, in data from the previous day for all the patients that we monitor from fire and creates a read replica. Uh, another agent captures the social network uh, data, augments it with sentiment information. Uh, and this, this is for all patients who have linked their social accounts with HAP. Uh, the secret sauce is in our decision engine that Jesse referred to, which walks through all the business rules and triggers specific notations, notifications. On the patient end, this results in a call to action, a survey in this case. Uh, finally, we aggregate the responses from the, uh, the survey and basically augment the fire data back with those responses and mood values along with timestamps. So that basically then can be consumed by any client of the fire API or any EHR. We build HAP. 
uh, to because everybody needs that moment sometimes to uh, really check in with their own uh, self and check in with where they are in their life. So happy because life happens. Thank you. All right. Thank you very much. All right. All right. And as you've alluded before, this is the first time that you guys have been using it just this weekend. Is that correct? Yes, yep, okay. Correct. Taking into account. Question from the judges. Sorry now. Yeah, thank you very much for that. Very interesting. Uh, a question, I kind of get this, the social uh, kind of mood tracking, and, 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 but, but how, how mature is your algorithm putting together all the data in, in tracking how someone is feeling? I mean, does that already exist, or do you still need to, to build that? Um, so you mean the sentiment analysis Yes, piece? I mean, uh, the sentiment analysis on social media exists you can, but, but I mean, I, what I understand is yeah, you can in integrate other too. data as well. Right. Do you already have that algorithm that integrates that? I mean, how? Yeah. how, how uh, so, so we essentially, uh, for the sake of this demo, um, since we couldn't push back to fire, we actually had to create our own uh, database that was kind of like a replica, and we were actually created the augmented database as well, so it looks like fire. Mm -hmm. uh, so we can easily push. So it would essentially be an observation that we push. Uh, and eventually, uh, the, we could then look at all of the observations over time, and you could add more context to it. Again, we're not saying that one data point is, a, you can, you can like, diagnose with that one data point, but you're looking at a history uh, of the longitudinal emotions. So, so essentially, when, when the end user, when the doctor looks at that data, they actually see kind of like their mood scores in addition to their vitals on one dashboard. So, yeah, but, but they get a prompt, right, to fill in the survey if they're not right. that their mood is is not that good. How accurate are you in being able to track? The we used we used a, a Goldberg test. Basically, it has like a standard set of questions. Uh, it's very accurate in determining d depression, and it basically gives you like a score. Uh, there's about th like 13 different questions and gives you a score between zero and 56. And it's been pretty well proven to kind of. Uh, and again, I mean, for the sake of this demo, I mean, we decided to go with something simple. Great, thank you, nice presentation. Um, a couple of questions, one was about the alert system that you might need to put in place and as you get more and more towards directing actions or recommending actions, um, how are you gonna come up against regulatory issues um, and, and also just truly critical times to intervene? So, so we've seen that most of the apps uh, that do any kind of emotion tracking actually are more of a tracker app as opposed to recommending care, patient care. So we would, I mean, just, just for the sake of the regulatory issue, I think the patient care would still rest with the doctor. All we're going to do is augment the information that they already have with additional data that we've captured in a format that they already can consume. I would, um, if you were to build this, suggest you integrate it with the mental health um, telemedicine app. There's many of them out there. Because the problem with sending somebody their GP or their oncologist when they are depressed is oftentimes they aren't the people equipped to deal with it. And yeah. so giving people a resource so they can have a, you know, an immediate or short-term you know, intervention would be helpful. Yeah. But I think it's a cool idea. So if you look at the support group, the idea is that there is a, a, call, a call functionality that we can build in right there. Uh, so my question is, I just, a clarification question. Um, you, you'll be looking to integrate a bunch of different kinds of mood trackers. For example, if Mirror Mirror gets built, that might be something that yeah. you would want to integrate. So, so yeah, so the social aspect was just something that we picked up to build for this hackathon. Uh, there's lots of other things like uh, app usage, uh, what websites people are using. And again, all of this can be done passively. And then obviously integration with other variables and other trackers, uh, which can be used. Right. Thank you. Just a quick question. So, you know, when you get all the data from different places and, and aggregate it together, obviously then the, the, the real hard problem is uh, being very accurate. And so how are you addressing, I mean, you said you had a quick uh, 56 question thing um, for the sake of a weekend of hacking, but how do, you how do you build out this capability of being very accurate in terms of diagnosing and intervening? So, so part of it is going to be based off of the uh, health I mean, we'll be surveying the, the care providers as well as uh, like mental health professionals for, for getting more accurate. Uh, again, I think it's, it's important that every user's use case is very different. Every patient is different. So it would be something where it would be built in accordance with their care provider. 
but you could have a general set and then a very specific set per patient. Okay, thank you very much.